I think what we're experiencing right now is incredibly traumatic for so many people. Um, we're dealing with, you know, number one, something that is traumatic. You know, a lot of people are losing their jobs, or even if they're not, I think everybody's job is, you know, there's questions about it. You know, I think it's a very unsafe time, and that's the perfect breeding ground for mental health issues. When you don't quite feel safe, when things don't quite feel steady, when you're not secure, um, you know, even if things are going well for you, and they aren't for everybody, but even if things are going well, this is a dangerous time. And of course, we have so many people who are out of their job or down on their work, um, who are super isolated, who are not able to do the things that that we've all been taught to do to manage our mental health, you know? Go to the gym every day, go swim some laps, go hang out with friends, go to the coffee shop and just treat yourself, you know? Like so many of our wonderful coping skills have been just cut off at the knees by, by COVID and at the same time that things have gotten so much more stressful. So I know we're seeing some you know, skyrocketing rates of addiction as people are at home and you know more able to drink or use or they're feeling depressed or they're feeling traumatized and they're self-medicating more and more um, and I imagine we're gonna see that with mental health too a lot you know there are some people who are I think actually finding the opposite who are finding that life is slowed down and simplified and I know you know I've talked to people who appreciate some of this but I think for the most part it's it's very very stressful on everybody and it's something that we're going to feel the impact of for a very long time even after all the restrictions are lifted and COVID's passed on i think we'll be dealing with the repercussions um, from a mental health perspective and certainly other perspectives as well for, for quite a while in terms of the impact or how it impacts treatment on a bigger scale it's it's very interesting, I think, um, because so much of what we see and what we deal with are people who have ended up in a place of isolation. Um, we're big on viewing addiction and mental health through an attachment lens, and a lot of what we, the way that we see people is a, a lot of the mental health issues and a lot of the substance abuse issues either as a cause or result, those individuals have gotten really detached from their social support network. Um, sometimes with alcohol or drugs, people are self-medicating, or other times they just fall away from family, friends, and support network because they've been using so much. But usually the people who come in here for treatment are pretty cut off and reconnecting them to each other, having them create a strong connection with clinicians and having them learn to rekindle meaningful deep human relationships where you're able to regulate your own emotion through an interpersonal relationship is huge and covid throws a throws a wrench in all of that because we're all forced to be socially distant we're all wearing masks we're all encouraged to socially distance and we're all encouraged to stay home and i really think it's it's created a lot of problems that have contributed to substance use and it creates a lot of challenges as we try to treat it as well. So much of what works for addiction and mental health is getting connected and staying connected and it's harder than ever. Um, even getting clients connected to an AA group is is more of a challenge. We've, you know, we're doing a lot in, with Zoom and we're doing a lot of groups, you know, just with our clientele here, but it's harder that you know it's harder for them to go out into the community and just go to a group whereas we might have done that in the past so um, you know I really see it as a, a unique challenge as we're telling people one of the best ways to get back to a healthy balanced lifestyle is to stay connected and create seek out and find those meaningful connections they're stuck in this place of yeah but how do I do that when I'm not supposed to go out, when I'm not working, when I'm isolated, when my kids are at home, when I'm stuck in, you know, and I'm not really able to, to do much, when I can barely even talk to the person at the, you know, at the restaurant, how do I create these meaningful connections? And, you know, we've been helping our clients just to wrap their mind around that. Reconnecting, it's hard to reconnect with somebody that you've lost touch with via Zoom, you know? It's so much easier to, to be in that room and try to make that happen.
I think, I think it is an opportunity that we as a culture have to be able to take this time and to understand that mental health touches everybody and that there's such a large societal component in mental health as well. Struggling with depression, anxiety, or any, you know, any mental health issue it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. It doesn't mean that there's something broken. It can mean that there are very real life stressors and pressures that are weighing you down. And, you know, depression, anxiety, and, and what have you are all very natural physiological responses to being under the sort of stress and pressure that we're under right now. Um, you know, I, a lot of times I'll explain it to people with just like Maslow's hierarchy of needs from Psych 101. You know, we all have certain basic needs and when they're not being met, you know, our brain sends us signals to let us know that our needs aren't being met. But, the, you know, if, if those needs are unmet for long enough, it kind of manifests in mental health symptoms. So if you are impacted by COVID and your financial security is shaky, everything's going to be shaky and you're going to be anxious. And it would be kind of weird if you weren't anxious if you when your financial situations in you know in, in question you know if you've lost your job or if you're in danger of losing your job and there's nothing you can do about it because you have zero control over covid it's easy to feel helpless and it's easy for that helplessness to blossom into depression because you have a major problem and you have zero capacity to control it and that is depression um so I think we have just a real opportunity as a society to, to take, this, take, take this time and to, to use it to understand that mental health touches us all. There's nothing wrong with people who are feeling one way or the other. It doesn't mean that they're not doing something well. And it doesn't mean that, there's, you know, that things are falling apart. It doesn't mean that they're flawed or broken. It just means that they're reacting to you know, life stressors in a way that... that that they know how, so.